We're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Our planet is going to be a disaster if we don't turn the ship around. And your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? And like, this is the war. This is our World War II. After your movie, An Inconvenient Truth, came out in 2006, you made the following comments as part of your publicity for the, the movie. You said, unless we took, quote, drastic measures, the world would reach a point of no return within 10 years, and you called it a true planetary emergency. We're 11 years later. No. Weren't you wrong? I'm struck researching this, how, how there's constant media hysteria, and it changes. In 1941, it was reported yeah. that World War II caused weather extremes. In 1961, the New York Times said, scientists agree the world's becoming colder. Scientists worried about a new ice age. Now we worry about warming. Shouldn't we be skeptical? Environment is being used for a power struggle. The environment is being used for centralized government. The environment is being used to make a one world government. That we are facing a battle against those that want to destroy a great United States of America. What troubles me about this is that uh, uh, there is a, a general uh, tendency, I think, on the part of, of our leadership that we need to uh, submerge the, uh, the goals and the uh, sovereignty of the United States to the goals and the sovereignty of the uh, uh, United Nations. Our country needs us, and we need people like George Soros. What sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new world order, world order, world order, world order. Is there going to be sort of a tipping point, a moment at which the dollar is fatally weakened, or does it just sort of carry on? A, 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 an orderly decline of the dollar is actually a, a desirable. Um, a decline in the value of the dollar is necessary in order uh, to uh, compensate for, for the fact that the U.S. economy will remain rather weak, will be a drag on the global economy. Uh, uh, China will emerge as the motor replacing the U.S. consumer. And of course it's a smaller motor because the Chinese economy is much smaller. So the world economy will have less of a motor. So it will move forward slower than it has. If the value of the dollar declines, our standard of living will plummet. Some Chinese factory workers work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. They live in dormitory rooms with six other people. You do not want what George Soros wants for us. George Soros heavily funds politicians that align themselves with his plans, open borders. It is time for Americans to throw the new left under the bus. Well, last year, criminal justice policies changed dramatically in the city of Philadelphia after a new DA, Larry Krasner, took office. He was backed by George Soros, and Krasner massively scaled back law enforcement in the city. Prosecutors stopped prosecuting numerous crimes. They stopped seeking cash bail for even some felonies. They deliberately imposed shorter prison sentences. Dozens of prosecutors were fired. So what happened? Cause and effect? Well, the most murders in a decade. Well, Black Lives Matter is seeing green. The activist group now cashing in on tens of millions of dollars from liberal foundations and donors, despite inciting violence with chants like this. That's right, the chant calling for the murder of police officers. Well, the Black Lead Movement Fund is a donor campaign aimed at raising $100 million for the group. That's in addition to more than $33 million in grants from top Clinton donor George Soros, whose aim is to destabilize this country. So, does Yuri Bismanov warned us about the communist intent to destabilize our country. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. 
when uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do, is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type of, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of it intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result? The result you can see. Most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of, the, uh, of the United States society. And yet these people who have been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock, when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, Obviously, they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously, they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Yes. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get... Uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, Actually, it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, 
would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck. With, with demoralization and unless even if, if you start right now here this minute you start educating new generation of American it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism the next stage is destabilization this time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy. Uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage of course is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C.